We're very delighted to have Pat Wurtz here. She's the CEO and Chairman of ADM, an agribusiness and energy company. We want to ask you first, Pat, how do you spot the spark of leadership in people as you interview them, as you consider them for the top management team? Well, it's a great question to ask about the spark of leadership because I think uh, part of my answer would be their perspective and their passion for what they're doing or what they intend to do. So I see it uh, as they describe their accomplishments, as they describe some of their failures and what they've learned from them, that what truly comes out is the passion about making a difference, uh, passion to improve, uh, passion to create value, value for stockholders, employees, uh, customers. You've had a career that has taken you all over the world, frankly, and you've had global assignments uh, in some pretty remarkable places. Do you think that uh, a leader in today's complex global uh, economy needs to have those assignments in order to move up the ladder? I think it's essential, actually. Not only a yes, but a uh, absolutely yes. Uh, not only today's complex world, but I think that of tomorrow, it will, it's already not U.S. centric. It's a global business. If you're working for a transnational or even a small startup, it's probably likely that the business will grow beyond anyone's domestic borders, whether you think domestic being the United States or the home country of, uh, of uh, wherever. It's, it's cl truly a flatter, flatter world and a, a global business. I think what you learn in being in different parts of the world and different regions is both the, uh, how the macro economy is interconnected as well as the uh, micro uh, economics as well as cultures of local regions uh, depending on the business you're in. You learn how different governments work, how they either enable or uh, even get in the way of uh, good business. Uh, how things work across borders. I think it's essential. And is it important to go to the non-conventional parts of the world? Well, I, I, I think of it more as emerging markets and developed markets. So sometimes the emerging markets, many in Asia, sometimes in, in Africa, Eastern Europe, uh, Middle East, uh, yes, they might be non-conventional, but they are the ones that are growing, where populations are growing, where their needs are developing, and uh, where some of the, the, the best markets in the world are. So, yes, sometimes they're not so conventional. So, so you've had um, a number of instances where you've come in and, and really changed the culture of the organization, both with your former organization and now with ADM, where you've really revamped the culture from head to toe. Talk a little bit about the, the process in which you've done that. Well, culture's an interesting thing, isn't it? It's sort of the history of how an organization or a company has worked together, worked with their, with their customers, with their constituents. And I think it's important to understand why, if at all, you want to change culture. So in the case of some of what we've done, what I've done at ADM, was uh, relating to where we wanted to grow and how we wanted to continue to add value maybe some of that culture needed to change. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. We, have, uh, we didn't have a very deep uh, strategic planning process or uh, budgeting process or, uh, for that matter, employee evaluation process. Uh, we did it somewhat ad hoc, better in some places than others, but we even had places that didn't have uh, those things ever in their, in their uh, formation. So to bring the ADM family, so to speak, together and be all sort of on the same page, we did spend a fair amount of time kind of talking about our, our purpose, our vision, uh, where we wanted to go longer term. Uh, first of all, it's a wonderful space to be in because when you're providing food and energy to the world, you're really uh, cre serving vital needs. So when we talk about our purpose of serving vital needs, that was one way to collect the entire 30,000 people around the world sort of around one purpose and then how they fit into that purpose and what their role in the portfolio is is another way to kind of get everyone on the same page and pointing in the same direction. A lot of communication, 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 <laughs> communication in many different formats and ways, both personally. I do a lot of town halls, visits to employee locations. I write emails. I do blogs. It's the opportunity to really uh, share with people both my perspective on, on what we're doing and how we're accomplishing it, as well as um, 
applaud and thank them for their efforts. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of different fronts. I mean, when you think about the vastness of your organization, 30,000 people in how many countries? We're in 60 countries. In about. 60 countries. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to create a whole. You're not trying to create 60 teams or many hundreds of teams. H how do you create that personal connection to the core of ADM? Uh, you, you talked about emails and blogs. Does that, does that bring people in to the fold? Well, I, I am on the road a lot, so I'm actually personally at all of our locations. I try to get to the larger ones every year or every other year. Uh, some of the smaller locations is, you know, even if it's spread out, I try to make uh, an effort to physically be with people and to spend time with the management teams, with the customers, sometimes with employees, small groups, large groups. So I think that personal connection really helps and has staying power to then, if you're reading an email or watching a webcast, uh, employees have a connection to what we talked about personally as well as what they're seeing on an ongoing basis. Uh, I also think the theme has to work across cultures and geographies. So let me pick one of safety. We've tried to make improvements in safety across the board in our company, both personal safety and process safety. And that's sort of a value that's quite universal, right? No matter what culture you're in, uh, people can value going home safely to their families every night or taking care of each other at the workplace or when they're uh, doing a difficult assignment or doing some maintenance work at the top of a tower. Uh, so safety is one of those things that is a connecting value, I think. Uh, so is integrity. So is teamwork. Uh, so is resourcefulness. Uh, so is responsibility. We, we talk about those values in quite a bit of detail and then say how they apply to our workplace or situations where we really didn't do it very well, and so how do, what did we learn from that, and how do we uh, uh, take that value to the next level so that we're more alike in our values, even if we're different in how we execute the business strategy. Now, you spent a lot of time forming your top management team. How do you, how do you, what do you look for, and, and how do you create not just individual excellence, but uh, team excellence? It's a, it's a great question. I think team excellence comes from a couple of things. Um, you need diversity in your team, and it's diverse backgrounds, uh, areas that you have expertise uh, with, uh, sometimes even diversity of where people worked before, what uh, backgrounds they've had, as well as diversity of thought process. So there's not always somebody that has a linear thinking or that needs to connect the dots, but they're much more spatial learners or spatial thinkers. Some are more strategic, some are more tactical. So we think of complementary skills and complementary ways to uh, participate on a team, as well as things that we're all very good at. So we all need to be uh, responsible and, and take uh, accountability for our areas, but then we only try to do things that only we can do as a team. So try not to be wasteful in our efficiency or our time so that we're not making joint decisions about everything but only the things that are pretty critical for the, the top team to make. We try to think of decisions, too, that the ones that are very difficult to reverse are the ones we want to spend time on. They're important to the organization, they're important to our strategy, and they're difficult to change course. Those, you need a more complete team consensus and dynamic and discussion, things that are easier to execute and that we're on our way towards a solution and we can adjust along the way. Those are made more by individual business segments. Uh, another question is, because I know that you personally and ADM take your broader obligations in, in the communities in which you live very seriously. And you are personally involved in, in giving back. You're here today at UCLA Anderson. We thank you. H how do you think about your priorities as a company, as an individual? Well, I think giving back is pretty important. I actually have a very high priority about uh, employee development and people development. I think uh, it's one of the things I love most about my job is I'm able to see other people grow, help them uh, in their own development, in their own growth, uh, challenge them, uh, give them different kinds of both assignments and opportunities to uh, both show what they can do as well as explore different areas that may be out of their comfort zone. So. To me, that's a top priority within the company from the people development perspective. As to communities, um, our company, and we think about uh, community engagement as a, as a threefold area where 
Our um, social investing program is around uh, long-term agriculture and agricultural growth in communities where uh, agriculture needs to grow, but also sometimes it's there. It's sometimes the poorest communities or rural communities that, uh, in many countries, that is sort of their their sustenance. So that's an area of investment for us. Uh, also, an area of education and an area of giving back to the communities where we do business. We put a big piece of our effort in our own local communities, and because we have 250 plants around the world and multiple locations with terminals and storage facilities, et cetera. That's a lot of communities. So I think they hold the license for us to operate. They hold our permit to operate. And we owe back to those communities to be uh, good citizens. And, and what, how do you invest in those communities? Education? Or? We do. We, um, education is one of the, um, the keys. But we also give our local management in each community um, a, a fair amount of, of uh, authority to invest the way that makes sense for that community and for our employees within the community. We also uh, encourage a lot of volunteerism and give people both the time off, the time, the, the resources to match and volunteer in their communities. Uh, we also work in areas to give back to each other. Sometimes, uh, whether it's hurricanes or natural disasters, employees are affected by that and we have an employee to employee giving program that also engages in how we can help each other in times of disaster. So I'm asking this last question to Peter. And Peter always asks a question about the narrative of leadership. What's, what's the, the story that binds ADM in terms of your leadership agenda? How do you unify people around a shared purpose with the story of ADM? Yeah, um, I, th I think it's an interesting, uh, both an interesting question, and it's a good one for every company to to sort of um, be asked or even uh, ask themselves. I think it's important to ask ourselves as a company, why do we exist? And of course, as a public company, we exist to make money for our shareholders. But more importantly, why or how? Um, or for that matter, what makes us unique in the world? And, and I think in our case, our purpose in serving vital needs and vital needs for food and energy allows us to say that the work we do and allows others to join us in this journey is noble. You know, it's a, it, billions of people around the world need us every day, either for the nutrition uh, that make their lives better or the energy that allow them to provide transportation. And if, if we come to work every day understanding that noble purpose, I think that uh, allows people to really want to join in that journey, whether they're our customers or people that we're trying to recruit to come work for us, or every day, if you have a bad day, you can kind of turn and think of the, uh, the more ultimate goal. And that's something everybody, I think, is proud of. Great note to end on. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Judy.